Okay. Now today I'll talk about the anointing of the Holy Spirit for building up our spiritual life and also for evangelism and for raising up people's spiritual life. It can really do great things uh, for the kingdom of God. And I, I want to say that, you know, like for myself. Now first I want to describe her daughter. Just now I pray for her daughter. At first she was very afraid. She was afraid what she might experience. But later she saw that I pray for the little girl and then she saw, you know, it's not anything. She was afraid of falling down and different things like that. And then I prayed for her and then she really experienced the Holy Spirit. That she felt the uh, great comfort and great power upon her. But then I talked with her. I found that she has a lot of this concept about God. She said, I don't like to continue praying. I don't like to spend so much time praying. So I had to guide her. And then she said, if I don't pray that much, does it mean that I don't have eternal life? So she has all these questions. That means she doesn't understand about God and about salvation and about following God. She doesn't have the desire. So I spent a long time listening to her and not rebuking her, not making her feel bad, but to guide her each of these questions, I guide her. So it's very important to understand that experiencing the Holy Spirit doesn't guarantee a person's life change. The person has to have the uh, understanding of the Bible, understanding of God, so that the person is following God, has the motivation to follow God, and then he can be changed. Yeah. Now, when I experience the Holy Spirit, it's a very different story. Because at that time, I have already been a Christian for 28 years and a pastor for 15 years. And so, uh, when I experienced the Holy Spirit, when the evangelist lay hand on me, I experienced great power enter me and I experienced great love enter me. I was so touched that I cried for a long time and I said, this is really wonderful that we can experience God like that. To me, this is a great, great news. And I, I was very excited. And I, I responded by, when I went home, I kept praying on the way. And when I went home, I spent more time praying. And every day, I spent more time praying. And when that evangelist was there, I went back every night. And so I have that motivation already. I have that understanding already. And then after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I went to different meetings, many different meetings. I want to learn how to operate uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit. And I went to many different meetings and I found that some meetings are good to teach us how to hunger for God. That helps us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But I also found that many meetings is just about experience. So uh, the preacher would preach about something to excite the people, to encourage the people. But usually they don't talk much about how to keep the relationship with God. How to keep the anointing. How to serve God with the power. I haven't heard that. Uh, I, I did, you know, one of the uh, evangelists did have a material that encouraged people to continue praying more. But most of them did not. And it was for myself because I have the strong motivation. Because I have been doing evangelism for all this time and I find that it's hard. And also to raise up people's spiritual life and it was hard. And I know that because from the scripture I know that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you receive power to be my witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world. So I know that the Holy Spirit is for witnessing and to build up people's spiritual life. That's the two parts are the part of a great commission. So I realized that that is a great gift and it's very helpful because my life was totally changed. And so I would ask, okay, how does it help evangelism? How does it help building up people's spiritual life? So I was very eager. When I went to these meetings, I found that they don't all build up that. Sometimes it's just about experience and then people enjoy it and then people like to go to these meetings and then they get excited. And then some people like to get the prophets to prophesy to them. But I did interpretation for, for a prophet and his helpers. And I found that many of these prophets will say something like this, Oh, God loves you. God loves you. No problem. Oh, your problem will be overcome. God will bring your finance. God will bring, help you in your marriage and all this. Now, all this is from the Bible. What I mean is, 
this is not the role of the prophet. But these people actually are not really following God. Their life is very weak. They just want some encouragement. They should be helped by a pastor or a teacher. But they seek the prophet. They think the prophet have, you know, the really is a secret formula. Formula. And then when the pastor, uh, prophet say, well, God loves you and likes you, and they say, oh. Uh, the, uh, the prophet said God likes me and loves me but actually it's already in the Bible we don't need a prophet to tell us that Amen. prophets Amen. are for guiding people and the church to serve God to follow God's perfect plan mm -hmm. to build up the body of Christ it's not just for feeling good you know and or for basic teaching you know repent of your sins the Bible has that already but people look for experience they look for special experience now, if we look for that, I tell you, the first time you experience the Holy Spirit may be very powerful. My first time was very powerful, but it was never the same afterwards. Because it doesn't depend on what you experience. It depends on how you keep the anointing. Even I don't feel the same way as I experience the Holy Spirit, but when I pray for people, I see people change. And that's the most important thing, to see people change and they follow God. The most important thing is that you preach the gospel. Bring people to follow Jesus and love Jesus and then serve God. That's the most important thing. So you have the heart for that. Now some of Christians might have the heart, I want to make more money. I don't want to have more money. I so I buy a car, I buy a house, I, I have more money for the future. So some Christians think, okay, God is here, money is here. So I want God to give me salvation. I want money to help me. Now, Jesus said already, you cannot love God and love money. The two are opposing each other. When you love God, you don't love money. But we work for money so that we can provide for ourselves. That's not wrong. But our goal is not just to get money. So it's very important. I hope you will say, yes, I want to follow God's plan. Now, many people, they don't want to follow God's plan. They want to follow our plan. I want to make a lot of money. I want to have children in this country. I want to be able to do this. I want to... Uh, be successful, I want to, you know, a lot of things we want. Uh, it might be our own will. What happens is, if we just want our will, let me ask you, God's will, your will, which one is greater? God's will is greater. But many people just want our will. What happens is, do they get God's will? They don't. They don't. Actually, they will suffer more and more and more. Now, some people say, no, and when I make more money, I'll be happier. But people who make money who work a lot, I don't mean you don't work, you work. But when people just want money, what happens is, you find that your heart is never satisfied. Life is always difficult. It's always trying to make more money, but it's not enough money trying to change the situation, but the situation is always difficult. So I hope that you all understand that. To follow God totally is the best strategy for your life. Now, do you believe God is in control of everything? Yes. Do you believe that God's plan is the best in the whole world? Yes. That is the best in the whole world. So if we follow God totally, that is the best for you. I hope you all believe that. But many Christians like this, I believe God can give me heaven, but then I want money, I want, I want this, I want that. And then so people want different kinds of things for themselves but I hope that you will say yes I want God and when I have God and when I follow God all these things will be given to us but you say I don't have that faith I don't believe that I don't, I'm not sure I'm not sure if I really will be blessed everywhere but we have seen God's very He's very real He really can bless us in every way He can provide for us He is all powerful and when we pray for people, we see miracles all the time. So I hope when you follow, when you want to seek anointing, first seek God. Amen. He is my life, He's my strength, He's my everything. When I seek God, I have, have everything. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a strong relationship with God, a very deep relationship with God. When you have a deep relationship with God, then you have strength then you have all the blessings. So it's very important that we put God first. When you don't put God first, I tell you, your whole life will be, oh, 
work here is not happy, not enough money, work here is not happy, and family problems, children problems, all kinds of problems. But let me tell you, when I follow God totally, He blesses me in every single way. My whole life is full of blessings. I'm free, I'm happy, I'm anointed, I'm, I have all the gifts. I, I, Jesus gave me a lot of teaching. And God gives me the provision so I can go to different countries to bless different people. And I see people change, I'm very, very happy. I'm a very happy man. And I have a very happy marriage, you know. This is my wife here. Right? I have a very happy life. My life is all happy. It's not just for my wife, mainly from God. Let me tell you, my happiness is mainly from God. But God does give me other happiness you know, from other ways. So I hope that you see that following God is the best for you. That's the heart most important. Now how to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Basically, it's the same question as how do we have a close relationship with God? First, repentance of all sins. God doesn't like sins. And then, read the Bible. Believe that the Bible contains all the promise, the keys to it. Blessings and the follow of God's plan. It's some people experience the Holy Spirit. They say, I feel very good, I feel very good, I don't read the Bible. I don't need the Bible, I just need the experience. Because we need our mind to be changed. We need to follow God's way of thinking. We need the Bible. The Bible has a lot of wisdom. And then we need to have faith to believe that God really blesses us. So when you pray, don't say, God, where are you? Where are you? That's lack of faith but to say God you're right here you're blessing me you're right here God is with us all the time so the Bible says in Psalm 139 verse 5 you're in front of me and behind me you're laying your hand on me God is always with us because when we sin have you noticed when we sin God speaks to you to tell us to repent right so even when we sin he doesn't forsake us he doesn't give give us up and when we come close to him have you experienced his joy and peace and love yes so when you come close to him you experience him that means he's with you when you are not following him when you are lazy when you are sinful do you notice God doesn't forsake you he continues to talk to you so God is with us all the time and that's why Romans 8 says nothing can separate us from the love of God nothing so we always have the love of God with us so the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit is we don't need to look there the reason is concentrate I, I, can, I can give you a material later okay. I can give you a material okay. later so it's very important just as like I said repenting of our sins and turn from sins to God and knowing that any sin any anger frustration negative thinking worry hating someone hating your husband or wife uh, dislike someone, all this will destroy, affect your relationship with God. So turn away from sin and follow the Bible and then have faith that God really loves us, He wants to fill us. And then number four is very important, to worship God in spirit and in truth. Many people worship just the mouth. Now I use an illustration. If you see someone you really like, do you, do you just say, oh, I'd like to see you? Is it just the response? When you see someone you like, it's like your heart really, wow, the happiness blow out, right? Yes. Wow, who? It's you. It's you. That's un unbelievable. It's you here. You'll be very happy that your joy will come out, right? Yes. Now, that is close to worshiping God in spirit. Then when you think of God, oh, it's you, God, you're so good. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. That is close to worshiping in spirit and truth. But most people don't. When they say, oh, thank God, thank God. They just say it in the heart. And they say, wow, God, you're so good. I'm so happy. Are they saying that? Or they say, thank God for my health. Thank God for my children. Thank God for all this. Thank God. Sometimes they just say it with the mouth. So we need to learn to worship God in spirit and in truth. When you learn that, I tell you, when you learn to really have your heart flow to God, like me, I tell you, 
Any time I think of Jesus, I'll have joy and love and power flow through me, even now. And sometimes you see my responses, sometimes you see my joy. When I think of Jesus, the joy is just coming. When I think of Jesus, His love and His power will go through me. It takes time to learn that. It takes time to learn to, to really love God from the heart. Now how do you do that? I break it down. The spirit and the soul. And the soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. Can you say it with me? The mind, the will, and the feelings. The mind means I agree with God in everything. My mind agrees with God that He is the best. He is the only source of blessings. All blessings come from Him. Following God is the best way to live and following God is the only way to live and not following God will always bring bad consequences, destruction, uh, bad cons uh, you know, that will bring uh, destruction. So the, the mind always says, what the Bible says, I agree. For instance, many people agree with the blessings in the Bible. They don't agree with what? They don't agree with tithing. They will say, I agree with a lot of teachings, but the tithing part is too hard. I cannot. But let me tell you, if you are faithful in giving, He will give you more than what you ask for. Now for me, I came from a poor family because my father gambled a lot. And then there was divorce, my father, my mother. And then what happened is, family was always beating and yelling. And then, when I was young, I ate rice with mold on the rice and we had to wash it clean of the mold and then cook it. I grew up in a family like that. But after I believed in Jesus, when I have income, I start to tithe. And I mean, some people say, well, keep the money for yourself. But I tithe and God, and also I follow God in every way. I love God, I tell people about Jesus. And what happened is God opened the way for me to study to have, you know, now I have one bachelor degree in Bible and two master degree in theology. And God gives me all the opportunity to study and I really work hard and give, God gives me all kind of talents. It's a gift from God, it's not me. I'm telling you, it's not me. But if you really follow God, He will bless you beyond your imagination. So I hope you believe that, totally believe God is the best. And then your will, yes Lord, my life is for you. If your life is for God, God knows it. You know, I go to different countries, why? Not because I have nothing else to do, but because I know that people in different countries need Jesus, yes. need revival. So I will go to places and try to find ways to open the way. And how I meet you guys is a miracle. I tell you, it's a miracle. I don't want to spend time talking about it, but that day when I arrived at the church again, and I heard you praising God inside, it was God moving. I was Amen. looking for the church across the street. And then I heard you praising God there and I went inside. Amen. It's God's planning. And God opens the way for all of us. So I hope that you will always say, God is so wonderful. Actually, you're going to come on. Okay, so the mind, the will, and the feelings. Now, if someone is nice to you, do you have good feelings with that person? Yes. Do you like to be with that person? Yes. Now, we have good feelings toward a lot of things. You have good, good feeling toward your cell phone, right? I mean, because it serves our purposes, so you like it. But do you like God more than you like your cell phone? Or like your children? Or like the people you like? So have good feelings toward God because He gave us food, He gave us health, He gave us beautiful nature, he gave us the move of the Holy Spirit, he gave us heaven. When you go to heaven, you say it's so wonderful. So I hope you all have good feelings toward God. Actually, if you can learn to like God all the time, that's already a kind of prayer. So when you're walking, oh, God is good. Oh, I like God. When you can like God all the time, it's already, you know, really appreciating God to the degree that you like Him. If you can do that, it's like, just now I said, when you see someone you like, you suddenly become very excited. That is already a high level of really happy with God. And then the spirit. The spirit is like what? 
that your whole spirit ascend to God. Your whole being. In Psalm 103, verse 1, it says that all that is in me will praise His holy name. So when you praise God, when you love God, it's from your inside. It's like, as I said, when you, the more you think about the goodness of God, let me tell you, when I have time, I always think about the goodness of God. When I look at your eyes, I see the goodness of God. Why? Why? Because I see that you want to have infilling the Holy Spirit. When Annette send messages to me twice. I see that she has a heart for Jesus. And she said, make sure you come to pray for me. And in my original plan, I would not be able to come back. I'm shortening my day there one day. But God, you know, it's God calling me here. And God knows your heart. So I hope that you will always say, oh, God is so good, I like God. If you are like that, then you can worship in spirit and truth. Every day you stand there, you just say, Oh, God is so beautiful. Oh, the food is so nice. It's all from your love. Oh, my body is so wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. The provision is so good. I like you. Can, can you like God? Now, some people say, I don't like God because I have so much difficulties. Let me tell you, the difficulty doesn't come from God. It comes from the world, comes from our sin. God will deliver you from the difficulties. God will give you more and more joy, more and more strength. So don't blame God for your difficulties. The difficulties came from the world, came from sin. So the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit is really love God with all your heart. And then, uh, just now I talk about repentance, turn away from sin. Second Bible, faith. Worship in spirit and truth and hunger for God. And then number five, follow the Great Commission. The Holy Spirit is not just for enjoying. Oh, I like the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It's not just for that. It's for evangelism and changing people's life, raising people up to serve God. And then number six, to take care of all problems in your life. If you at home every day you get angry, you get frustrated in your work, your relationship to other people, you need to take care of that. But you say, how can I change my husband or my wife? He or she is not nice. How can you change? Sometimes you cannot change them. You can only love them. Maybe they don't change. Now, let me ask you. Is there a guarantee that all your family members will all become good? No guarantee. So, even when they are not good, that will say, now, if I have anything wrong, I'll ask him to forgive me. But if I, it's not my fault, if, if it is his fault, should I get angry for that? Should I be angry for someone else's fault? No. If someone... Have you known people who are misbehaving all the time? Have you met people like that? Yes. Mm. Get angry, say negative words, yelling at people, hurting people. Now, these people are always like that. Now, they always... The black sheep. Not good. Should we be always unhappy because I have someone like that around me? Should we be unhappy? No. Now it's natural to be unhappy. But what we need to do is to turn off all the negative influences. We say, no matter how bad it is, it's his fault. Do we have to take people's problems? We don't have to. So we learn to say no. Now we, we want to be nice to them. But we don't want to take the negative words. Now, this is the key. Okay, let me tell you how, how to do that. The key is like this. If someone says something negative, now please look at me. This is very important teaching. Very important teaching. If someone says to you, you fool, do you become a fool? No. I become a fool now. He said, you fool. Do I become a fool? No. No. Do we have to take the word? No. Do we have to be angry with him? He said, you fool. Oh, uh, th I'm not a fool. Do we have to fight? I'm not a fool. I'm not a fool. Do we have to fight with the person? No. Uh, no. But do we have to take those words seriously? No. He said, you fool. Do we have to take the words seriously? No. No. But people usually take that seriously. People usually take that seriously. Because he said, he talked like that to me. I have to do something back. I have to at least... Steering, yelling. But when we do that, who will suffer? 
we will suffer. So the best strategy is like that. When you discern that what people say are negative, now it could be from their family members. Do we have to keep thinking about it? No. No. But we like to think about it yeah. because we're angry. But when we're angry, what? who will that affect us? It will affect us. So our whole life will be in ruin, and we won't be able to live without infilling the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, I've been hurt many, 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 many times after I experienced the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Every day I'm filled with the joy of the Lord. And one day, someone says something negative to me, and I immediately felt very bad. And then the Holy Spirit moves me to take care of me. So I call the person again to say sorry, not for I have done something, but I said, if I make you feel unhappy, I'm sorry. But the person was still angry. And I said, I've done my part of it. I've let go. So the key is, do you want to eat garbage? Do you like to eat garbage? No. No. The key is, don't eat garbage. When people say negative things, don't take it seriously. When he says, you fool, it's okay. We won't become a fool, right? Yeah. When he says, you're too slow, okay, I'll hurry up. I'll work faster. But we don't have to take it seriously. But very often, very often we feel we have to do something back. Is that from God or from our sinful nature? When we say we have to do something back, is it from God or from the sinful nature? From the sinful nature. And those things will take away the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand me? Now, I'm, I'm very brief to say this, but you can look online for Pastor Yip and look for some teaching. Joyful victory. Victory, Pastor Yip. I have many teachings on this to describe how to take care of negative feelings and negative words. When people say negative words to me, I can look at them. They can be saying negative words, I can look at them with peace. I'm not angry because I said, this is problem. I will look at them and be gentle to them, be nice to them, and then after they finish, okay, thank you. I'll take care of it. I'll watch that. I'll be careful. I don't have to be angry. That way you have victory. Now many people, when they hear someone says something negative, immediately they are knocked down. Oh Lord, I'm, I'm in pain. Oh, it hurts really. Oh Lord, oh Lord, help me. And gradually they go up again. And the next time someone yells at him, oh Lord, oh. Is it easy that way? Now for me it's like this. Whatever he says, it doesn't matter. I won't lose anything from his work. The basic idea is, don't eat garbage, say it with me. Don't, Don't eat, eat garbage. garbage. Eat the Word of God. Eat the Word of God. Eat the promises of God. Eat positive words from people. When people say, thank God, you say, yes, thank God. And people say, well, let's serve together. Yes, yes, serve together. Positive words from people, godly words, you agree. So this is very important. If you want the infilling of the Holy Spirit, we must not let any negative things affect us. And I will use an illustration. If someone pours some dung, you know, dung from the restroom, from the restroom, the dung, throw it at you, not garbage. Yeah, toilet. Toilet. What will you do? <laughs> you say, I want it, I want it. No. no. When it gets onto your clothes, what do you do? Wash it. Wash it away. But someone get it and then go home and say, God stinks. That man is terrible. That man is terrible. And don't wash himself. And the next day, that person is terrible. You'll say, you're crazy. Why, why do you keep smelling, smelling it and keep <laughs> cursing? <laughs> but let me tell you, that's what most people do. They keep smelling it. They keep remembering the bad things people say and they keep cursing the person. Have you seen people like that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you sometimes like that? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So remember, do you want to eat garbage? No. no. Don't eat garbage. Eat the Word of God, the promises of God. Hold on to that. So these are the keys to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's say it again. First, repent. repent. Turn away from sin. Second, Bible. Three, faith. Four, worship in spirit and in truth. For a long time, if you want to eat filled the Holy Spirit, you pray for three minutes, it's not going to work. At least half an hour or more. The best is one hour or more. And then when you are working or doing other things, 
at the same time, oh God, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. All the time. Now, you don't have to say it out. You can just say it from your heart. Jesus, I love you. Let me tell you, I try to do that as long as possible for the whole day. All the time. And I can feel His presence. So, feeling God's presence is very helpful. Worship in spirit and truth. And then number five, follow the Great Commission. The Holy Spirit is for the Great Commission. And number six, take care of problems in life. So I hope that you see that. Okay. But if you learn more, it will be good. You know. Okay, now you are being videotaped here. Okay, okay. Okay. Nice. Now, so, now these are the keys to the being filled. These are the keys to being filled with the Holy Spirit. The next thing is, how do you use it for evangelism? I'll say it briefly and then we'll have a great time. Now, first, God can be experienced. How many of you have experienced the Holy Spirit? Now, when you praise and worship, do you feel joy empowering you, your body? And that's from the Holy Spirit. That's your experiencing already. But for some people, they only experience that during the prayer time. Some people only experience the Holy Spirit in the praise time, but in not in other time. So we need to learn to be able to experience the Holy Spirit anytime. But now the point is, we can experience His peace. Jesus said, peace I give to you. We can experience burdens go away. Jesus said, all you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. And we can experience His love that the Holy Spirit pours the love of God in your heart. And we can experience inner healing that is uh, heal the broken heart, comfort all those who mourn, right? And then we can also experience joy because the, jo the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy and then uh, the, oil, the uh, oil of gladness instead of mourning. So we can experience all this and also healing because Jesus said, in my name you cast out demons and also lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. So Jesus' plan is that all Christians lay hand on people because he said in Mark 16, Miracles will follow those who believe. In my name, you will cast out demons, and you will lay hands on the sick, they will be healed. So God's plan is, the miracles will follow the pastors? No. Or, what? All believers. Now, but let me tell you, if you are in serious sin, or have demons attack all the time, you have constant de demons attack, uh, that means you, you you attack in a dream or you have evil spirits talking to you. Don't lay hands on people because evil spirit can also be transmitted by laying out of hands. Because the evil spirit also came from the Holy Spirit. Because Father, Son, and Holy Spirit created the whole world and created angels. And the angel fell and became <coughs> evil spirit. So evil spirit, now they are different from God. The Holy Spirit is holy. It makes people joyful. But evil spirit will make people want to commit suicide, make people unhappy. So uh, it's different. But but there are similar similarities. The evil spirit can be transmitted by laying out of hands, or by blowing, or by body contact. So we don't want to get close to people who are serious sinners. You know, you know, some people they commit adultery. They have a lot of hatred. You don't want to have contact with them because these people would have evil spirit. Now, if you greet them, you shake their hand, it's okay. But you, if you know this person really is a serious sinner, he commits adultery with different people, he probably would have evil spirit inside him. So you want to pray while you are shaking hand that you won't be attacked by the evil spirit. So it's very important that we, uh, that we can experience the Holy Spirit. And then how can you use it for evangelism? When you come across some people in your work, on the street, uh, neighbors, your, your relatives, what you want to do? Build up relationship. First, build up relationship. Say it. Build, build up, up relationship. relationship. Listen to them. Listen to them. Care about them. The first thing. When you listen to them, don't just tell them, oh, pray, and you'll just probably be solved. When someone is very happy, for instance, if you are very happy, unhappy, you, if you are very unhappy, and then someone just say, you pray and you'll be okay. Okay. 
Now listen, listen. Now if someone is, if you are very unhappy, and then you tell someone, and a person just say, pray and you will be happy again. Do you always feel encouraged? No, I feel angry. Yeah, because the person is a teacher, right? Yeah, he's kind of right. teasing. But sometimes people have a tendency to teach too much. Yeah. The best is like this. Oh, it must be very painful when your family have fights, when your children don't obey you, I know it's not easy. Now if someone talks like that to you, how do you feel? Oh. Yeah, you feel the person accepts you, right? Yeah. So learn to say that. But it doesn't mean I agree with you to yell at your husband. But at least I know you're suffering, I know it's not easy, right? So we can say that to the person, I know it's not easy. And then what we can do is uh, listen to them and respond to their feelings and say, I know it's not easy, I know you're unhappy, and uh, I know you want to find a way out. And then at one point, after they finish, wait until they finish, but you say, he has talked for a long time already, let him finish. If he notices that you're impatient to listen, he won't tell you more. He won't listen to you. So let him talk. It's okay if you have time. But if you're really in a rush, then uh, don't just talk about the gospel right away. You say, okay, I, I, I can see that you are in pain and suffering. I will remember you. But at this point, I have to go. And uh, uh, I'll listen to you next time. And then when, when next time you listen to again and the person finish. Now, if the person keep going the same story over and over again, then you can say, well, I know your story, I know it's very difficult, and I'd like to share something with you. Is that okay? And the person says, I, I want to keep talking about it. But we can guide them to say, we can guide them to say, well, keep talking about it, does it solve your problem? Do you want to find a way out? And then, and then we can say, we have experienced something similar, or someone has experienced something similar. And then we pray, and then the burdens go away. And then you ask, are you willing? Is it okay that I pray for you? So that's something we can do, to invite people to pray for them. So first you need to learn the anointing and take care of problems and practice that. So you can lead the, the members to have a time of being filled with the Holy Spirit, to lay hand, uh, and then to check out if they take care of the problems, to counsel them, and then if they, uh, now, you don't have to be perfect. But if you have sinned, you ask God to forgive, and you really try to handle the problem, and then we'll be okay. Because there's no one that's perfect. But if every day he yell, and the next day he ask for forgive, and then the next day he yell again, then he should not uh, lay hand on people again. So what I mean is, when you try your best, and then you still have some sin, and then you pray for forgiveness, and then generally you are living in a presence of God, then it's okay for you to pray for other people. But the leaders can test out the people, whether they are suitable, and then also counsel them to see if they are handling the problems well. And then, when you lay hands on people, pay attention. Now first, I will pray for you in a moment. You could experience the presence of God. Now each person experiences God in a different speed. Some people experience it in a very fast way. Some people, I'm, the moment I touch you, immediately you can experience Holy Spirit. Some people, it takes a while, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because if you hunger for God, He will come to you. And actually, even if you don't feel anything, it doesn't mean you haven't experienced God. So you keep praying every day. Spend more time. Really love God. And then your anointing will become stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And so what I do when I, as I said again, this method of evangelism is like this. I listen to people respond to their feelings, care about them, and don't just teach, just listen longer and, and comfort them, comfort them by saying, oh, I know it's difficult, I know it's painful, and I can feel your pain, and I, and I, I know in a situation it's not easy. That way you already make friends. And then you can share what you have experienced similarly, or someone experienced sim similarly, and experience the help of God. And then, are you willing that I pray for you? If the person says yes, and then you ask him to stand up, Standing up is easier to experience God. And then the person can feel the presence of God. Now how do people feel the presence of God? Keys, the burdens go away, comfort to the body, because in uh, Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9, it says that my body will rest secure in the presence of God. My heart rejoices, also my body will rest secure. So God's presence will bring comfort. 
That's what your daughter said. <coughs> she felt great comfort. So the heart will feel good and the body will also feel good. And then some people will sway. The body will sway. And um, now there is biblical support. When John saw the glorified Jesus in Revelation 1.17, he fell to the ground. And when uh, Saul, he was chasing after the Christians to the way, on the way to Damascus, and then he saw Jesus and he fell to the ground. And the soldiers, when Jesus said, I am, and then they fell to the ground. So in the strong presence of God, some people could fall down. And then some people might not experience so strongly, they will sway. They feel the body sway constantly and with energy, constant. Now some people thought I was pushing them. So I, I usually just touch people on the side like that, just touch them. And when you pray for people don't, too, don't put weight. Just touch and don't push. Don't want them to fall down. Don't push. Falling down is not, fall, falling down is not going to do anything good. It's experiences, love and peace and joy that will do good. So it doesn't matter whether they fall or not. It doesn't matter. And then after the prayer you say, please keep your eyes closed. And then ask, have you experienced anything during the prayer? Why do I say, please keep your eyes closed? Because if they, are op if they open their eyes, they can be distracted by the things around them. So if they keep their eyes closed, and then you ask them, they might say, oh, I feel peaceful. I feel the burdens go away. But some people say, I don't know. And then you can say, do you feel anything in your heart or your body? But I usually ask, what have you experienced? Instead of feeling. Because people will say, you are, you are doing evangelism by feeling. With, by experience. What is, what is the point of experience? Now in the Bible, there are examples like Lazarus was healed and he and the other people turned to Jesus. Right? Many Jews believe in Jesus. And also when, when uh, Peter made a man at the temple walk again, and then uh, 3,000 people believe, uh, that 4,000 people, on that day it's 4,000. 4,000 people believe. So miracles can bring people to, the work of God can bring people to Jesus. So you ask them what they experience, it, it can bring people to Jesus. And experience some for some people is very strong and powerful. The reason is sometimes people have pain and suffering and evil spirit, and then the presence of God is very strong. But some people they don't have that much tension, and their experience might be not very strong. And also some people the heart is not very open and be very strong. But even if they have a little bit of experience, you tell them it's good. Uh, and it's God blessing you. God gives you peace. He said, I, I experience peace. Fire. And then you said, hey, I have the verses here. You can take a photo of this. That Jesus said, peace I give to you. If the burdens go away, you say, well, Jesus said, all you who are weary and burdened come to me and I give you rest. And then if they feel love, and then you say, the Holy Spirit pours the love of God into you. Or if you feel confident, and then you say, oh, I Heal the broken heart and comfort all those who want. So you can use these Bible verses to tell them, God is working your life. Do you want Jesus to continue to bless you? If they want you, then you can tell them the gospel, Jesus Christ died on the cross for them, and lead them to pray and ask Jesus to forgive them. So this is the way of um, evangelism. Now, how to raise up people's spiritual life by prayer? There are many Christians who are lukewarm, who are lazy. And then when you pray for them, if they're willing, and experience the peace of God, the love of God. And then you can ask them what they experience. And how does it make you feel? And they say, oh, it makes me feel good. And then you say, isn't that good that you can experience God like that? And then you can pray for people too. And then you can bring people to Jesus. And then you can change their spiritual life. Do you like to do that? And then they say, yes. And then you say, well, you pray more and take care of your problems in life. And and follow those things I just said, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then you can train them how to serve God. And then you can bring a revival to the spiritual life of the Lord. So it's useful for evangelism and to raise up the spiritual life of God. And I do that. And I also train them to pray for people. And I found that they can pray for people and lead people to Christ. You know, my prayer team in Hong Kong, they, they pray for people every week. In our service, Every week, we allow time for people to bring people in and then we'll pray for them and counsel them and then bring healing to them. So God is very, very good and very real. Now,
Do you have any questions about what I just said about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit and how to use that for evangelism? Now you can see this again in Facebook, but now I'm going to pray for you. And then you can pay attention to what you experience, and then you try to keep that every time you pray. And then you can keep that moving in the Holy Spirit. And your whole life will be blessed. But some people just look at their own problems and say, uh, my problems are not solved. I have no strength. I cannot do anything. But Jesus said what? Come to me all you who are weary and burdened. Come to me and you find rest. I am humble and meek. Take my yoke and learn from me. And then you find rest in your heart. For my yoke is easy, my burdens are light. That because God is very real. And if you follow him, you take his yoke, that means to serve God and learn from him. The whole life will be blessed. You find rest. And his burden is light and easy. Don't think that you have to take care of all your problems before you can serve God. When you serve God, your problems will go away. When you seek first his kingdom. Seeking his kingdom means first you want people to believe in Jesus. Second, you want Jesus to be the king. That is his kingdom. Let me ask you, in your heart and in your family, do you find God in control all the time? Or do you find your temper in control? Is, is God in control of your temper? temper. Okay. If, if our temper, then that is not God's kingdom, right? I want God's kingdom to be in my heart, in my home, in everywhere I go.